Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Shall we make a start? A very, very warm welcome to all of you in every sense of the word to this year's summer seminar. Those of you who don't know me or might not have met me, my name is Almud McDowell. I'm head of Department for Organizational Psychology. I'm also a native German, glad that I'm still here, but please could I just kindly ask, um, whatever you do, don't mention the football, it still hurts. <laughs> But uh, I guess good luck to England, hey, and to my adopted home country from now. So what I will do now is just give you a brief overview kind of what the department has been up to us academics and the students. And this is a new thing this year, which I, we are going to try. If any of you want to post questions for any of the speakers, you can use your mobile phones, you can use slido.com, and you can input this hashtag org psych and that will allow you to post questions to the speakers about the event so let's see if that works i will pop the slide back up later on as well just to remind everybody super so research news in our department let you um, let me talk you through some of our current projects so Libby, who is here in the audience, will later on talk to you about her research, which is funded by a visiting scholarship for a German researcher, Ulrike Fassbender, to look at intergenerational contact in the workforce. So if any of you are interested in participating in the research, Libby is the one to speak to. My colleague Vanessa, who also has been awarded a grant from the British Academy and Lever Hume Trust, the research is titled Bring Back Our Girls, a Cultural Analysis of Gendered Leadership Development in Africa. So really questioning some of our westernized assumptions about what good leadership development might be. Um, my colleagues Rebecca, who is at a conference, and Chris, who is on annual holiday, lucky him, are currently collaborating on a project together with Rob Swain, who is over in Humanities, looking at regional theatre and the young director scheme who, to look at people who otherwise might not have gone into the arts and the potential opportunities they have, but also some of the stumbling blocks that they might face. More news, uh, Pippa Parents in Performing Arts, that's a project that I'm involved in at the moment with Kevin over there and our research assistant David Gamblin. We're hoping to do the biggest survey ever of the performing arts se uh, sector, so looking at theatre, dance and music, looking at work-life balance and career penalties. And so far we've got a sample of nearly 1,500, so keep your fingers crossed that we will hit the 3,000 mark because that's our target. And we've got a dissemination event planned in the House of Commons in October, so no pressure. Um, an international symposium on policing, that's an event that we ran here last week because myself and some colleagues from the School of Law have been involved in a research project looking at how policing training is changing. You might have seen in the papers that as of this year, anybody who wants to become a police constable now has to have training that is equivalent to a BSc in policing. The Louise Tebbers Foundation, that's a project that Kevin is involved in with my great friend and often collaborator, Gail Kinman, looking at the health of doctors, really a topic very close to our hearts, also with our MSc in medical leadership. Consultancy and other projects. Um, I've been involved in a project with NASDAQ, helping them to recruit their assistant to the head of behavioral science because they didn't really know what skills profile they were looking for. I helped them with that and it worked. So they're quite happy. Um, Rebecca's research um, available on the DEFRA website and we will also give you a pack with all of the slides looking at pollinators in the UK, an absolutely fascinating report, really also looking at how 
how important nature is for human beings. So really, really interesting project. And last but not least, my colleague Chris has been involved also with our still current student, Alan, do, uh, doing some assessment work for Highways England and based on some of the research they've been doing on assessment centres, really questioning the approach that they were taking and helping them to do it better in the future. We've also got a new joiner, um, Alex Beauregard, who does research around diversity and work-life balance, um, who is very happy to have come to Birkbeck and to be in a department of organizational psychology because she's a psychologist by first degree. We've already fostered some collaborations here in the department. And interestingly, actually, she is looking at retrenchment and uh, progression in my home country, in Germany. Germany. So no doubt in due course we'll have some findings to report back. Our students are changing. I thought actually I put a slide up uh, about that too because you might have seen in the news that, uh, thank you government, the introduction of the tuition fees has fees has rather put a stop to part-time study in the UK, which is very sad in a lot of ways, but it also means that our student profile here in the Department of Organizational Psychology is changing. We're getting more and more full-time students and fewer and fewer part-time students. So something to report back in due course because it just means that we've got a very different student profile joining us now. Um, but students we've got are being incredibly successful so I thought I'd also share some of these successes so uh, a couple of our recent uh, graduates and about to uh, graduates Maisie Beckenham just uh, presented her really interesting qualitative research on what people think about Fitbits in the workplace at the IWP conference Catherine is here in the room so I won't say all too much but she's been invited to contribute to the DOP Work-Life Balance Bulletin and also to speak at the Association of Business Psychology Conference. Adina Boschka, who can't be here today, uh, she was successful uh, to take part in a DOP-funded symposium at the European Ac Academy of Occupational Health. So we'll all be going to Lisbon together. Our students have also been very successful on the MSc in managing change in organization. Some of them are working on a project with DEFRA and have been invited to events left, right and center on the back of the success of this project. So some real success stories to share. We also have had a whole string of successful PhD completions. So my colleague Kevin Teer, who is sitting in the audience last autumn, uh, Claire uh, Laurent, who studied with Andreas Liefhoge, doing very interesting dyadic research on mentoring relationship, and Asta Meditauskaito, who under Caroline's guidance and supervision has been looking at the well-being of doctors. So very pleased to see some doctors coming out of our department. Department. So, today's schedule, uh, in a moment I will be introducing Wilson, then we've got an interactive panel which will be chaired by Kevin, at um, 3.15 we will probably all be ready for a break and a cold drink, and then we will continue giving you an overview of some of the really res recent research from our new joiners in the department, and then hooray, it will be time for more drinks at the end. So, when we asked our alumni last year and the year before about what they would like to see in the, sem the seminar, there were two really kind of big pieces of feedback. They said they would like some more contact with our professional associations. They would also appreciate more talks that are really future focused. So, how is this for a job title, right? <laughs> Head of Insights and Futures Wills, and that really, really takes the crown for the best one yet I have seen. 
absolutely delighted to have you with us. Um, Wilson has been with the CIPD for some years, uh, leads the insights, futures and foresight capability, uh, serves on a number of editorial boards, is a uh, chartered fellow of the CIPD, a member of the International Association of Applied Psychology, and was called to the bar in 1990. So, Wilson, without further ado, shall I hand over to you and thank you for being here. Thank you.